Well, I'm hunting today with uh, the newest Hatson gun. This is called the Factor RC. Uh, quite a bottle on the front of it of air, and much of it's like a, an M16 or M4. Uh, what's nice is it has these large circular clips that also fit in the uh, Blitz and other vehicles, uh, other guns. And it's got a, a nice pullback lever here. Anyway, this is their newest, and it has a 23-inch a barrel. And if you follow Hatson, and I follow them all, I like them all, uh, you'll see that every couple of years, they keep lengthening this barrel. And that tells you how important barrel length is. Now, if you've got a backyard and you're only going to shoot about 30 feet out, gosh, you don't need a 20-inch barrel. If you're going to go out and hunt 200 yards out, you're going to need about a 35-inch barrel. Uh, probably a good Air Force gun for that. But uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to think. Actually, this isn't 23. I think it's 28 inches, so they keep getting longer and longer. This is about nine, nine. Yeah, I think it's about 28 inches. Anyway, when I get out here hunting, it's just a good quiet time to give some thought. And uh, one of the things that I'm thinking today is about how important timing is. Um, imagine for just a minute that you ask a girlfriend to marry you or to go steady with you or whatever. And you ask her six months ago or you ask her six months from now. The answer may be a whole lot different than if you ask her today. Strange but true. Timing is important. And uh, timing for asking for a raise with your boss. Timing for asking for that great supervisor job. It's all about timing. Be sure you have timing right. And by the way, if you can get upset easily and angry and swear, I've never seen anybody swear at the right time. So try to get rid of that because you'll do that one wrong. Timing. You know, when I'm hunting, I often look at trees behind me like this. Trees can tell you a lot. Depending on how high the scrapes are on a tree, can tell you how big of a deer or an elk that you're hunting. But it's just not high up. If you're hunting bear, a uh, bear can, can uh, claw up a tree they like to do that just about where my shoulders are. If you're hunting wild boar, oh, they like to rub and do that body of theirs much lower around my knees. Uh, but watch for that height and that'll tell you the size of the animals in this area. You know, uh, when uh, I was younger, I, I did a little racing. <laughs> well, we got a famous street here in Detroit called Woodward, and we would race from one light to another. But when I was younger, I raced uh, go-karts, and I raced motorcycles. And I learned something about it. I probably could share a couple of tips from along the way on racing. But... Uh, Imagine being on a motorcycle doing 110, 130, and it, I had this habit, a wild boar ran right across my path in the big, uh, in the uh, Smoky Mountains. <laughs> One of the mistakes you can make anytime you're driving, whether you're racing or not, and something comes across your path, don't watch it. We call that focus fixation. And, uh, when you focus on something, there's kind of a magical thing that God allows our arms to turn the steering wheel, the handlebars, whatever, and go hit it. You're focusing on it. I remember uh, Dr. Paula was learning to ride a motorcycle and she, uh, she came around a turn. <laughs> she just kept looking out 
in front of her and she went right off that road. Fortunately, she wasn't hurt. But you can be. You hit something in a motorcycle doing about over 40, you could be in a little trouble. Life is a little bit like focus fixation. Make sure you're focusing on the right things in life. The family, uh, the job, and that will help you a great deal. But focus fixation when you drive is not. Now, uh, another thing that uh, helps us in traveling is uh, going into the woods early morning before it's light and then coming back at dark. How do you do that? Well, if it's your own little farm or something, you'll find your way. But what if it's not? And uh, something you can buy are these thumbtacks with uh, like glitter on one side and you can stick it into the trees that will help you find your way back in the morning with the flick of a flashlight or find your way in. Uh, I used to do those a lot. I don't anymore. I, uh, I just am careful as I go in. Here in Michigan, we often use uh, blue spruce trees. Blue spruce is my favorite tree, by the way. And it has kind of a iridescent blue-green look with a flashlight at night. And uh, when I go into the woods the day before and I'm looking things over, I'll say, okay, there's two blue spruce over there. And there's another one over here and I've got to walk right between them. I've got to go right alongside and when I get to that blue spruce, I'll turn right. So I use trees today as I work my way through the woods uh, hunting here in Michigan. Um, you need to keep an idea. We get some hunters lost every year and people have to give up their personal day and go looking for them. Let me help you with another tip that I think about when I'm out here hunting. In the Army, in fact in all the military forces, I think we have a saying that says when the going gets tough, the tough get going. In Vietnam, I'd get through a jungle, we'd do a body count, and I'd say, oh my goodness, where in the heck is Ramirez? Because that meant we had to go back. And we did. And we would find Ramirez, lost, whatever. And then we had to come back out a second time. And I learned in the military, this is what lesson I want you to have for life, whether you ever get in the military or not, is that when the going gets tough, that's when the medals come out. I don't like to bring out my medals. I, I think I did a couple of times. You saw that I, I got 13 medals in Vietnam. I, I think I was the second most decorated man in my battalion. The battalion has about 700 men. They only give out medals when the going gets tough. And that's true at your job, your church, whatever. And an accident on a freeway. So when the going gets tough, don't start looking for places that you can exit and run. I've seen men run and leave the child and wife behind. That's a different kind of medal you get that day. But when the going gets tough, the first thing I think about, medal time, this is the moment whether you get a medal or not, you'll be reflect on it the rest of your life. What did I do when that person was hurt or left behind? I, I've got a concealed carry permit and so does Dr. Paula and I, I have to tell you, the fear is not shooting somebody who's shooting somebody else up. The fear is if I don't carry it, and that's when that shooter appears. And I'm trained, I'm good at it, and I didn't have it with me. And people continually to get shot. So if you have a concealed carry, carry it. Or one day you'll be sorry. Let me share this with you, and that is, uh, I think we all know that uh, 
the priorities in life is God first our Creator first church third number two family how important is family because I got to tell you if you don't have that one down pat you're not going to get the other two let me just show you something as we get closer to home that I've done about family to show you how important family is and it's important we have four daughters and two sons and 15 grandkids I joke that I on my tax return I put down a tribe and that's a bigger discount than when you put down family uh, we miss our four daughters uh, they've moved away South Carolina New York and they took bulk of those grandkids with them and I can tell you there's days that hurts it was really nice when they all lived here and we got together frequently so now Dr. Paula and I we we go looking for them and uh, we we'll take several trips to go all over America in an effort to uh, spend some time with those kids but let me tell you what we do about family while we travel you see these trees here well they came back home from one of those trips in a McDonald's drink cup you know the big large drink cup made out of plastic I take a little spade and somewhere even right on the property line of a McDonald's and I'll dig up a little pine tree and stick it right into that cup and now I know that I have trees here from the states they live in and so when I walk about this property, we've got, well, we've been doing this for quite a few years. And uh, I think we have uh, over 80 pine trees on the property and over 100 arborvitae. But those pine trees came back from those trips. Some of them are pretty good size now. But we kind of raise them to four or five feet here on our deck and then then I bury them out there in the yard somewhere. Well, I, I hope you learned something good here today. I want you to remember there's a way you too can wear one of these great shirts and hats if you want to. Uh, I'll show that at the close of the video. And uh, we still have some. You may want to get involved in that. Meanwhile, stay air gun sharp. Give us a thumbs up. And remember staying sharp safe, silent, very important.